Washington earned two big time defensive commitments on Tuesday. You are locked on Huskies, your daily podcast on the Washington Huskies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back in to another edition of the Locked on Huskies podcast. I'm Roman Tomashoff. That's Lars Hansen. He's the site editor over with Inside the Huskies and Athlon Sports, and I'm the site editor with Huskies Wire. Thank you for making this your first watch or first listen today. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I have a competitive side, and it's a big fan of Monopoly Go. The mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly, so join your friends and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play. So, Lars... Washington got two big-time defensive commitments on Tuesday, getting Oklahoma safety Justin Harrington this morning, and now later this afternoon, uh, former four-star edge rusher, one time the top recruit in the state of Washington, Jaden Wayne, who originally committed to Miami, and then decided to come back to UW through the transfer portal, has committed to Washington officially now, and full disclosure for all the Everdares out there, we are re-recording this first segment because... Lars, you talked to Jaden Wayne's dad, and we thought we had a little bit more time on that one. Yeah, this was one where Washington got the first official visit over this past weekend. It started theoretically Friday, Friday, Saturday, left Sunday morning. You can call it what it is. Came in this past weekend for an official visit after transferring from after entering the transfer portal last Wednesday, I believe. And it was a good sign that they were going to get the first visit, but the indication given was this isn't a one stop. This is a hey, we're going to take a couple of other visits. It's not to say that we're using Washington or that we don't want to end up at Washington, but other schools were certainly in play. There was over a dozen schools that reached out to him in the first 48 hours. I'm not going to say certain schools. I'll just say schools that used to be in the Pac-12 that are that are following Washington and things like that. But this did seem like the situation that fit him best, where he started as a – not started, played as a true freshman, sorry, in eight games at Miami, was more of a reserve He didn't start one. No, you're correct. Oh, oh no, no, did, right. Did start the the the, the uh, what is it? The Gaspo Millers, uh, the the yeah, bowl game yeah. again, whatever, whatever, whatever bowl gas thing that was at the end of the season. But still, it's a start nonetheless. But this is somebody that you're expecting to have for two or three years be a significant rotational piece, where maybe not as much in 24, but I would certainly expect him to get nine, ten games. And now, how many does he start? Probably not a ton, but he's going to be in that rotation. And then you look at 25 and potentially 26. That's why you want to bring like a player like this home, where we talk about the in-state recruiting efforts. Sometimes it's a high and low year. When you, whenever you can bring in top premier talent that has played in the state of Washington in high school, those are the guys that you want to go and get, unless for some reason there's a specific reason that you don't go and get them. I'll ask Hewitt. Absolutely. So two things here. First of thing is Jason Kafusi has a type. When it comes to edge rushers, he likes likes them big and lean and with super long arms. You look at Lance Holtzclaw, you look at Jaden Wayne, you look at Russell Davis, you look at Isaiah Ward. They are all cut from the exact same cloth when it comes to that. The second thing is this is a really great take by Washington where I really love all the athletic traits where, you know, he didn't necessarily produce at a high level as a freshman at Miami, but you know, it's something where with a year development or something I wrote about a little bit over on Huskies wire, where if he takes a backseat for a year is still in the rotation, still playing a little bit here and there, but you know, he's able to refine himself, maybe add another five, 10 pounds to his frame. He's listed at six, six, two forty five right now. But if he's able to able to add a couple more pounds to his frame, do a couple, couple more things athletically where he's already a really nice athlete, but if he can just learn to utilize, his body a little bit better. He's somebody who played a lot of tight end in high school and didn't really make the transition to defense full time until his senior year when he transferred to IMG. So I really like being able just what he's going to be able to do in this defense. It we might not see it all pay off right away, but it's something where this is a great take where you can talk about the hometown pride and everything like that in terms of getting the local kid to come back home. Where we saw Isaiah Thomas give him a shout on a shout out on Twitter, which is always really cool to see. But on top of that, this is a great long-term take in terms of what he can be athletically, where that was always my biggest question with him as a high schooler was, hey, I really like his film. I think he can do a whole lot of things, but I think he might need a year or two to develop where it seemed like he always wanted to go somewhere and play right away, which is the opportunity he got at Miami. But Lars, with that being said, he wasn't the only player that Washington reeled in on Tuesday. Justin Harrington is another big-time get for the safety room. 
Yeah, this is one that we kind of hinted at throughout the spring where you want to take this is again a, a not necessarily a straight up depth take where he might play, let's say, six games. No, he's going to play the full season as long as he, again, the caveat here is if he can stay healthy. Where last season he started the first two games at Oklahoma and then suffered an injury against SMU in week two. So he got the start, couldn't finish the game, ended up missing the rest of the season with an ACL injury. Sounds like the coaches believe he's fully healthy and, and that won't be an issue in terms of by the time he gets into, into fall camp and, and the start of the season, it doesn't sound like that injury will be a lingerer for him. But when we watched the secondary this, this, this spring, we saw a lot of growth, but it yep. did seem like, and again, that's why the difference between spring camp and fall camp is so big because spring camp is the perfect time to get guys like Peyton Waters, all these true freshmen and saw and redshirt freshman time, Dyson McCutcheon, a reserve now who's a junior, but hadn't gotten a lot, a lot of playing time under the last two years of Kalen DeBoer. Some of these guys get them early reps, get them a ton of reps in spring and then supplement it with the fall and see, okay, have they grown? Obviously we'll see Peyton Waters, but now that, probably limits him to four games, which is good for his development, right? But it also allows Rashawn Clark to get four games. It allows a number of different guys to still grow. And we talked about this again, full disclosure on our first time around doing this. He's this is a perfect teacher. And think yeah. about how many – think about last year where Jabbar Muhammad was the cornerbacks coach, assistant cornerbacks coach, and <laughs> star cornerback. Now you have John Richardson, Vinny Sanceri, Armand Hawkins is another guy that's been developing some DBs in that room as an assistant with the defense of Steve Belichick. And then you add in a veteran piece who this would not be his seventh season in college football after being a junior college transfer at Bakersfield College for two years before signing with Oklahoma in 2020. Wealth of experience, doesn't necessarily have a ton of game reps, 19 games, two starts, but those tangibles and that size, you cannot replace that and you cannot coach that size. Absolutely. So that's one of the things that I, I really like is that that size is really nice. He's got really, really nice athleticism and he's somebody where he hasn't, he doesn't have a whole ton of experience in terms of some of the injuries he suffered where he's played 19 games started to, and as you said, yeah, suffered a, a torn ACL against SMU this past season, but a couple things to like one of the things you said, yeah, he's a fantastic teacher. I reached out to somebody, um, we, we, we had a nice little conversation the other day where they're really close with Harrington as it is and said, this is a wonderful guy who loves to take kids under his wing and loves to just be there. And in a room where there are four true freshman safeties this fall, four, Peyton Waters, Rashawn Clark, Raheem Wright, and Paul Menke, you're going to need somebody like that who can do those things and who can be that teacher. And outside of that, he's going to provide a lot of depth where... He's somebody where I can see him getting a couple of spot starts against, you know, like some of the Iowas of the world where they just like to, you know, crowd the line of scrimmage, run the ball downhill, or he can start as a strong safety and then just walk up into the box and play linebacker if need be, where we've seen Peyton Waters play that role at some point this spring. But now that's somebody where I think Waters can is going to do a great job of that in, you know, in a year or two, but he's not 6'3", 220. Justin Harrington is 6'3", 220. So that's something where I like what he can do from that aspect of things as well. And then moving forward, he's somebody who, you know, Lars, if he's healthy last season, we're not having this conversation because he's off to the NFL. So getting this extra year seems to just be a really, really nice fit for this defense and just an extra piece for Steve Belichick to use, which is all really cool. But the the last thing I, I want to say on that note is he adds so much depth where you can, you now don't have to worry about burning the red shirt of one or even two of these true freshman safeties where now all of those guys can take a back seat. And, you know, we're still going to see some Peyton waters, some Rashawn Clark, some of all those guys. But now instead of just saying, we need to see a leap out of Vincent Holmes and out of Tristan Dunn, he can kind of bridge that gap with those guys as well. And Lars, with that being said, there are a whole lot of other transfer port portal targets. We got to hit as well. Right. After a message from our good friends over at FanDuel, it's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. There's so much fun stuff going on in the NBA right now. I'd really love to see, you know, like maybe a, a Denver... I'd like to see Denver and Minnesota match up in the Western Conference Finals. I feel like that's that, that'd be something to bet your money on. If you know if you if you're over there on FanDuel, that's uh, it feels like a decent bet just in terms of how those two teams look right, right now. And hey, shout out Jaden McDaniels has been 
excellent for the for the Timberwolves so far in the playoffs. And you know when we talk recruiting, we got to talk about our good friends over at LinkedIn because when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs is a tool to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new role but might be open to the perfect job. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. And that's why LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the hiring process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. You can post your job for free at LinkedIn. LinkedIn.com slash lockdown college. That's LinkedIn.com slash lockdown college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So, Lars, let's get into some other transfer portal targets. So, as the everydayers will listen to this, it's the start, the start of May. It's May 1st. So the transfer portal window is closed. But that doesn't mean that all the targets from the transfer portal have entered. We've seen a whole slew of offensive linemen enter over the last couple of days. But uh, just a, a quick back, background on the portal itself. Once you officially file to enter the transfer portal, schools have 48 hours to comply. So if somebody decides to enter you know, late on Tuesday night as we record this, you might not hear about it until Thursday morning. So there's going to be a little bit of time where more guys could still potentially trickle in. And this is not a full, let, let's just say it's, it's not everybody that Washington might end up looking at so far. But with that being said, are there any names that stick out to you as, Oh, this is somebody that you needs to get for one reason or another. See, that's kind of the interesting thing about this spring portal period is there hasn't been necessarily the flux of certain talent, certain Certain yeah. players in certain positions that we thought was going to be the case. Well, we've everyone was speculating before the portal opened in April on April 15th or 16th, somewhere in that ballpark. I don't even know at this point. But everyone was expecting to have this mass just exodus, just half of yeah. the teams of college football having their players go in the portal. And we have flat out not seen that. We haven't even honestly, to be fair, haven't even seen anything close to that. Where no. some of the players that have transferred that are bigger names, Dylan Edwards going to Kansas State. Not necessarily a surprise. He goes back home. Most of the transfers that we've seen have either been kind of like in the Harrington mold, where it's an extra, it's a guy with a one year trying to go to a certain place, things sort of things in that nature, or guys leveling up, right? Um, we talk about D'Angelo Titiali, where he comes up from Portland State. You're you're seeing Absolutely. some more of those type of transfers than you are. I can't even think of the example here, but just a, a prominent like a Jaden star- Rashada. A, a Jane Rashad, right. There's a couple of those, right? But we have not seen a multitude of those, and certainly not at several positions. Where when we talk about the offensive line and tight end positions, they're not it's not necessarily once Marcus Bryant came off the board and once a couple other guys came off the board, um Bryson Hickman, the center from SMU, came off the board and didn't go to Washington. Then it kind of became, oh, now you're it's like the second wave of free agency for folks that like the NFL. Once you get through that initial yeah. wave, now those guys on one year and two year contracts that you're bringing in, or you can see maybe what the max could be, but you're nowhere near getting the value that you would have by signing a marquee premium free agent, which I guess in probably a couple of years is what we're going to call a transfer border period. <laughs> so when I look at, when I was taking a look today at both positions, and especially the, you know, the tight end room might not necessarily need it, but again, you look at some of those guys, um, there's a Nevada transfer that went in today. But none of them, like they didn't have ties to the Arizona staff. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a prerequisite. But sure, I that I think to answer your question directly, I can't think of a name immediately off the top of my head where it's hey, we got to go get that guy because all the guys that are left are more or less we're taking one of these three guys and we'll be happy with them. But it's not necessarily sure. our first target. So I see where you're going with that, but I I feel like there's. It's And it's something you and I talked about last week where, especially when you look at the offensive line, it's come to a point where you got to make sure you reel some of these guys in. It's just that that's that's just what it is now, where you got to make sure that you make good on what you said you were going to do and reel in some of these extra bodies. And one name that stands out to me is Enoch Vimahai from Ohio State, where he's somebody who's a former top recruit and somebody where, you know, he's got a little bit of experience under his belt. But I just, I think of guys in that mold where 
it's somebody might not necessarily be the most experienced or have just a whole ton of starts under their belt. But I look at guys in that mold of, you know, there's some potential there, there's size there. And it's something where can you make do? And, you know, outside of maybe some Arizona guys entering the portal, which we haven't seen yet, but it's, it's still might not be out of the realm of possibilities, but outside of, you know, and I have to use this example because it's the the best one I could possibly give is if like a Jonas Savaena entered the transfer portal. We haven't seen that. If that happens, this is a whole different discussion, but we haven't seen that. We might not see that, but so you have to kind of, now it's time time to cast a wider net where you and I sat on the show in January and February and said, hey, you're going to have to be patient with the offensive line because it's like we got to wait till April. You got to see what that looks like. And then you can start to say, all right, this is who we want. That's who we want. Marcus Bryant was that guy. He ends up going elsewhere. So now it's time to, okay, sit back. Now look at option, as you said, maybe there are three or four different options out there. And okay, you got to find a way to reel these guys in because you need to make sure you have that veteran depth along the offensive line where, you know, getting Kaylee to fly, getting Elijah Jaquette, some of these, these snaps early on in spring practice is great. That's going to be awesome for their development down the line. But for 2024, that's not going to be how you find solutions. Exactly. And that's the problem is we have the long-term answer, but not the short-term answer. And what we've seen in the spring cannot fly in the fall. And one thing to consider when you, when you, you mentioned um, the Ohio state transfer, one thing to kind of consider that I mentioned that I kind of touched on was it doesn't necessarily have to be a prerequisite that the Arizona staff offered him or occurred to them, you know, preferably offered them when they were at Arizona. But when we're looking through a lot of these guys in the portal, Arizona wasn't in on some of them. So now these are new relationships that are being built. So that's why we might see a couple of weeks take place before we see some offensive line additions. I'm not saying it's great, but I'm just saying it takes a little bit of time to truly evaluate who the best guy is when you don't have those relationships already in the bag where Brennan Carroll came with Jed Fish from Arizona. Most of the recruiting staff came from Arizona. Armand Hawkins came from Arizona. And they didn't offer some of these guys that are now in the portal at the offensive line position and even other positions as well. But specifically staying with the offensive line, that's kind of where the, I think, hiccup, not hiccup is, but what the delay is, right? Where if you don't sure. have some of these guys built in with relationships already, already cultivated, that's what you're doing at this point at the back end of spring, which isn't optimal. So you're they're going about it the right way. Still, I know it's a painful yeah. kind of time period for Husky fans to not know who the offensive line is going to be, but you would rather the staff take an extra week or two to sort out this second second mix and second wave of offensive linemen in the portal instead of just saying, we're going to take this guy, this guy, and this guy because we like their size. And yeah, they haven't started at all, but we're hoping to kind of see if any of them stick. That's not the plan to go about this, and that's not the way UW is going about it. So it's just a matter of who is going to still enter the portal, which I still believe there's going to be some names that will not necessarily be a surprise, but maybe some that we've been waiting for. But if those don't, sure. then they're really in that second, third tier. So it kind of – we can't even project what it could be because either they're not in the portal or the guys that they're looking at still haven't been publicly offered or visited. Absolutely. And, the, and that's that's the frustrating thing about all of this is the more you look at it, the more it's, all right, you know, we're, we're hearing X, Y, and Z. We're, we, we're reporting on, you know, whatever has happened. But until it's all official – no, nothing is set in stone. And that's just kind of just what this era of college football is. That's okay. We can't, we're not going to be able to change that. We can't change that. So we just have to roll with punches to a certain extent. And it feels like at a certain point, that's what the coaching staff has to do as well. Whereas, yeah, you know, you can say like, oh yeah, we're hearing this guy's in another portal from here. This guy's got out of the portal from there. So, you know, we're going to try to make sure everything is ramped up to go after that guy. And then it doesn't happen or, you know, some, something else happens and they, and they go somewhere else. These, these are just all part of what college football is, which is confusing and it's frustrating for some people. And that's, that's all fine. I, I understand all that, but it's just with where the offensive line is right now. And then to a, to a certain extent, I would say defensive tackle as well, where we're going to see what Sagapolu looks like there. Maybe they end up keeping him on the offensive line, but like we saw, uh, Brandon Allen, the, um, the Stephen F. Austin transfer go to Miss Michigan State, where that was one where it's okay. Yeah, you know you missed on Philip Bleedy. It looks like this is going to be the guy, 
then uh, he ends up going elsewhere as well, where you've got to find a way to make sure that these guys are still coming in. Exactly. And I mean, that also could say that maybe Jacob Bandis has impressed the coaches more than they thought, but I still think similar to Harrington, you want to add one guy, at least on that defensive line, just to shore up the room, just to give that extra pass rush. Cause while Bandis is a good run stuffer, they don't, there's not necessarily that interior pass rusher outside of what we know or believe Javon Parker can become just necessarily hasn't seen that in a full season. Absolutely. And Lars, that being said, it's not just, you know, uh, the transfer portal. There are going to be a whole lot of high schoolers on campus this weekend for the spring game. And we're going to get there right if we give a shout out to our good friends over at Monopoly Go. All right, game off. We're going to pause here to talk more about Monopoly Go. I know what you're saying. Flag on the play. You already talked about that, but there's just so much good stuff in this game. In Monopoly Go, you can team up with friends for time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock. And there's so much to get. You can get unique stickers. You can trade with your friends to complete albums for big prizes. You can get cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with. Hilarious emojis for taunting friends when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like Digging for Treasure or Robot, Robot Pachinko Machine. And there's always new timed events that help you win big, like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the bench and go download it now free on the App Store or Google Play. All right, game on. So Lars, there's going to be a whole lot of high school guys on campus this weekend as well. And I, so two guys, we haven't really gotten a chance to talk about on this, on this show just yet that have been added to the official visitor list uh, a little bit later on are edge rusher, CJ May from Alabama and safety Ladarian clarity from Florida, where those are two guys who are both ranked in the top 200 overall. And, you know, there are a couple other guys that we're going to get to over the course of this as well, but those are two really, really exciting gets for the recruiting staff to get these guys on campus for the coaching staff as well. And it just really is exactly what Jed fish has been selling. Like we're going to make sure we recruit. We're going to make sure this is a really, really good class of 25. And it's what makes the, some of the fr- transfer portal stuff a little frustrating to talk about is you see that the effort is there. You see that these guys want to come visit that they, that they're very clearly interested enough to want to come be a part of what Washington has to offer but you just want to see some more commitments on that front. It feels like these two guys, it doesn't feel like maybe Washington is on the top of their list, but at least staying in the mix, kind of like with Anquan Fagans is an awesome thing to have. Exactly. Well, first of all, getting an official visit, and that's what these guys, that's what we're talking about here, right? We're not talking yeah. about unofficial visitors. We're talking about official visitors. So getting that 48 hour window, whether you're the first school or the fifth school, or even the, they can worth noting, I guess for, some of the some of the everydayers kids can take as many official visits as they want now they used to be back in the day a couple of years ago you can only take five now you can take 20 if you want so it's not necessarily as much as it used to be but it's still important to get these guys on campus in an official capacity and this couldn't be a more perfect weekend for it in terms of you have great weather in eight, at the end of april beginning of may and the spring you get to hopefully see husky stadium somewhat filled up maybe we'll touch on that before the end of the show or probably by the end of this week before we talk on for, before, yeah. before friday's show we'll get um, but but again this all comes back to you can only get there until you get the guys on campus and so getting these guys from the east coast and from alabama from florida when we talk about that some of these positions are down on the west coast and down on just the west side of the country in general you have to start looking elsewhere and that's why having these resources for jed at Washington, which he didn't have at Arizona, he's using them to the fullest. Now, it would be nice if they could reel in either a Fagans or or a CJ May or or Clay from Florida, but just getting them on campus already starts that process because you don't take an official visit, especially all the way out to Seattle from the East Coast, unless you have legitimate interest. This isn't just a free trip for the sake of it, because let's be real, as much as kids like free trips, they're not flying all the way out to Seattle at the end of April just for a visit. Yeah, absolutely. So with that being said, let's let's just run through the, le- the rest of the list of guys who are taking their official visits this weekend. Champ Talwele, four-star offensive lineman, who's the third top 200 kid who's visiting this weekend from uh, – California, Vander Plug, tight end, four-star tight end from California, Peter Lange, a three-star offensive lineman who you and I have covered a lot on this show, and Tristan McMillan, who's a quarterback from Hawaii. That one's really interesting, and it looks like there's uh, there's been some movement on, oh, excuse me, no, there's uh, there's two other guys. 
One of them is scheduled to come in on Thursday, or at least according to the 247 tracker, which is just the, the easiest way to get this list right now. Uh, Donovan Olubudi, the four-star wide receiver from IMG Academy, Raiden Vinebright's teammate. And then uh, Anthony League, three-star running back, who's also from California. So it's going to be a really, really big weekend of guys. Is there anyone in particular that's standing out to you? Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned McMahon because that's one thing we got to talk about, especially on the heels of Demarcy's Davis departure. Dash Beerley, I got to watch him at the Under Armour camp, uh, I believe over a week ago now. Um, yeah, and and let me tell you, he he is very much he's very impressive in terms of what he kind of can do as a dual threat quarterback. But now, when you only have two scholarship quarterbacks going into 24, Dash will be enrolling early in January, so he will come in early. And I would imagine McMahon comes in in June. McMillan. That, or McMillan, sorry. McMahon. McMahon. Different, different McMahon, the running, McMahon the running back. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Too many recruits flying through my head right now. But McMillan, shout out Jay Mack for landing with Tampa Bay, will um will come in, I would imagine, in June. And that's how you can start to stagger this depth out, where clearly the staff likes Dash Beerley. But do you, would you, this becomes, do you rather take a portal quarterback or do you take a second high school quarterback in 25? Or do you take kind of one of each? And I don't know do necessarily. I, I, I think, but getting McMahon, uh, get McMillan on campus, I kind of stopped saying that. McMillan on campus kind of allows, shows that the staff is at least entertaining the thought of having a second quarterback. But I wanted to get that out there that Dash is enrolling early. So it's not going to be the same situation where you're not going to bring in two early enrollees in 25 again, yeah. try and run that plan back. Because I think Jed Fish and, and uh, Jimmy Doherty, the uh, quarterbacks coach found out it's probably not necessarily the best plan in this day and age of college football, but you want to still have that staggered progression of young quarterbacks lined up. So where you're not going into the portal every year or every other year for a guy, you want to be able to develop those guys, but we also know DeMond's is going to start cooking here pretty soon. So you don't necessarily need a starter, but you want to have that continued growth in the room. So, but that's why you can take like a, a, a Juco guy who's got two years of eligibility remaining where, you know, if you need somebody to do some mop up duty and DeMond's already played four games, you can go to that guy. So there, there are other ways to make sure that you get there. And it's, it, it, you know, we're still talking about this problem again next year, right? Or if, if you don't take, I, I would say some kind of guy with two years of eligibility in the transfer portal, where if you take Tristan McMillan and obviously Dash Beerley, that's still three quarterbacks. And then it's, you know, if, if DeMond does burn his red shirt, it's a sophomore and two true, 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 two true freshmen. And if not, it's three freshmen with one being a red shirt. So it's, you're, you're not necessarily avoiding the problem by doing that. I, I hear what you're saying. And I agree. We're taking two quarterbacks in this class is still a very good thing or just have some depth, have another guy where it's, yeah, you know, like obviously dash is somebody who you probably look to after DeMond, but having somebody like Tristan McMillan around anyway is really nice. But the one guy I really want to touch on, because you and I have talked about Peter Lange on the show, who reminds me a lot of Jonas Avaena in terms of his tape, in terms of his size, and what he's just kind of able to do on the field as well. But we haven't talked about Champ Talele, or that's another guy who looks like he's got that same flexibility to play inside or outside, top 200 kid, and where you really, really want to make sure you build up the offensive line in this class. That's a huge piece to get. And then, you know, that's without mentioning some of the other guys. Like, I really like Vander Plug as well, where this feels like they're going to take two tight, two tight ends in this class. And I'd really like to see it be Caleb Edwards and Vander Plug. I really like Baron Nwane as well. Uh, AJ Eo was another guy they were really high on. But as you're recording this, he committed to Arizona State earlier today. So it seems like between those three guys that I just mentioned, they're going to want to take two of them. It's just a matter of, okay, who are they going to get to commit first? And it feels like Vander Plug might be the first guy to jump into the boat at that position. And, you know, if you want to go after the big fish and Caleb Edwards, who's a top power guy nationally, that's that would be a really great way to do it to say, hey, here's another solid building block that we have, and you can still come in and contribute right away. So this is this really could shape up to be a really nice weekend for the Huskies. Exactly. And I think one thing to point out with Champ is he, since it's his first official visit, he'll take one and yeah. looks at Walmart. Well, depending on which site you want to believe, uh, Cal and USC, because they're both scheduled theoretically for the same day on his 247 page, so you can't do that. So my, my, my point in bringing this up is getting that first visit, we've kind of seen that that can go both ways. They got Philip Bleedy as a transfer first visit, but a lot of the recruits, when they brought them up early and made those early first impressions, ended up getting those guys, Jake Flores, Dash, you know, Dash didn't come up early, but they had the prior relationship. But getting Julian McMahon was a guy that, you know, similar mold where you get him up yeah. on campus early and just whether it's an unofficial or in this case an official 
they seem to be closing in on those guys earlier. And it's a perfect building block to have Champ come in because then you're still taking at least three or four more offensive linemen. But now you have a solid interior guard and a tackle guard that in Jake Flores, which you can kind of start to build the class out on. And then to your point with the tight end position, yeah, I was getting Caleb Edwards is your top tight end target. Yeah. But since you're taking two, it allows you to get that first one of the boat who you do like in Randall Plume. And thinking likely whether Caleb Edwards makes a decision in July or ends up pushing it down the, down to a senior through a senior season, you can go through that process with Caleb Edwards, knowing at the very least you just got to go find another tight end if he doesn't work out. Already having one tight end secured, so that way the staff is building this class out perfectly and correctly. Not necessarily slowly, but I think it's a staggered progression, which is what you want to see. And plenty of visitors lined up this weekend and in the coming months to come. Yeah, and uh, so just to add on to what you said before we get out of here, it's something where, you know, let's say you you don't end up landing Caleb Edwards and Baron Owane commits, but Vanderplug is a really nice get. I really like what he can do, especially as a receiver, but he's somebody who, and this is okay because, you know, he's he's still a a, a rising senior in high school. I was about to say still a junior, but, you know, we're, we're, we're talking in terms of 2025, so still a rising senior in high school, but he's, he's still a little bit on the skinny side where he needs to put on some weight, but that's somebody where, He's a really fun receiver. You can teach him as he gains weight to continue to learn how to block. And moving forward, that's a fun piece you can have in your offense for three or four seasons. And let's say the Caleb Edwards stuff doesn't work out. You can always kind of pivot and you still got Noah Flores in the state. You still have Teandre Waverly in the state. There's still other ways you can go to make sure you fill out this class with multiple tight ends. And Lars, with that being said, as always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to all the engineers for tuning in. We really do appreciate your support. We've got so much more fun stuff coming for you. So please make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, whether that's YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music. We're there. We're everywhere. We're updating this channel with new content every single day. So please make sure you subscribe. Hit that like button. Click that little bell so you never miss when we post a new video. And if you're uh, audio only, please leave us a five-star review as it all really does help the show out a lot. And if you got any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, please feel free to drop that right below in the comment section. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will talk to you on Thursday.